Welcome back to FIY with Fiona. So today, I'll be channeling my inner Bob Ross and we'll be doing some DIY watercolor paintings. So they'll be super easy. They're inspired by Society6 anthropology kind of paintings. It'll be more of a vlog style kind of video today, kind of just showing you guys how I found the inspiration images and then creating these paintings ourselves. You guys can customize these palettes and make it your own. So you can kind of change up the colors and change up the aesthetics a little to match the palette that is in your home. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, comment, so I know exactly what kind of content you guys enjoy and I can create more of it for you guys. Also, I wanna add, you don't need to be an amazing painter at all. This is really simple, it's great for beginners. I by no means am an amazing painter at all, but um, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. I'm doing it step by step so you guys can follow along and do these paintings yourself as well. All right, let's get painting. You'll need watercolor paper. Mine is nine by 12, but you can get something bigger. Um, here's my watercolor palette. I've had it for years. I'll try to find something similar on Amazon and link it below. Um, here I'm trying to show just the colors and how I've set up my palette. It's a pretty messy palette since I've had it for years, but um, if you want something cleaner, you can always wipe the middle of the palette down um, so there isn't a mix of colors, but I don't mind having a mix of colors and having it blend together like that. You'll need a pencil. I'm using a 4H pencil so it will be really light, so it will be uh, lighter and you can't see it as well on the paper. Um, you'll need a good eraser, black pens, a uh, felt tip is my preference, and then watercolor paint brushes and um, just different tips so uh, for our different projects. And then water and paper towel. So for the first DIY, I'm inspired by these paintings I saw on Society6 through these beautiful like line drawing of women with flowers coming out of their heads. Uh, I think kind of drawing like drawings of women look really pretty in your bathroom or your like walk-in closet or like your boudoir I don't know like <laughs> I think it just adds a really nice feminine touch to it so we'll be kind of being inspired by that where we'll do kind of the black outline of the women and flowers as well but add a watercolor touch to the flowers so it adds a pop of color to the painting so it's not just a black and white kind of drawing so right now I'm kind of just drawing the outline of the woman. You'll see the reference images I'm trying to follow. I don't want to draw hands because I'm not really good at those and I find those are harder to draw. So I just want to draw shoulders, a neckline, and jawline. <laughs> you can't even see it, it's so light. I was inspired by California wildflowers, so I wanted to include poppies and lupins. I thought the orange and purple contrast would make a really nice painting. I'm just using kind of reference images of what it, like what color I should be using for the poppies and then um, for the lupins as well, kind of a purpley color. I think that'll look really nice together with the purple and the orange. I'm lightly drawing out circles to try to find the placement of where I want the poppies to be. So drawing lightly so I know exactly where the placement will be before I start sketching them out. Now that I figured it out, I'm starting to sketch the petals of one of them. This whole time I'm looking at images of poppies so I can kind of copy what they look like and draw it out as well. So I have my laptop in front of me. It's okay if you make a few mistakes, you can always erase it. And at the very end, after we're done drawing everything, painting everything, we can erase any pencil marks that we see. So it's a really forgiving way to paint.
after we have all our poppies drawn, then we'll start with the lupins to um, fill out the rest of the gaps in the drawing. So um, I'm sketching out a few leaves in the middle there, and then I'm going to draw some lupins coming out from the side. Actually, <laughs> I have one more poppy that I want to sketch out. So I think that should be my last poppy. So yeah, here I'm sketching out the loop in. Just look at your own composition and see where there's gaps, how you could round out the image a bit better and uh, fill it out that way. We're gonna get all our petals wet and we're gonna go and do a gradient from orange to yellow. So you get some orange onto your paintbrush and kind of start off and brush outwards. After that, I'll grab some yellow and fill out the edges of the petals with that and blend it together with the orange in the middle. Okay, so I'll use my phone to show you exactly like how I'm blending the colors and grabbing it over here. So first, like the other ones, we'll just be making the flower wet first, so it'll help with the blending. There was a bit of yellow on my paintbrush from before, so don't worry about that, it'll all blend together. Okay. Just get the whole flower wet. And then we'll go to our orange and grab some color onto the paintbrush, and then start from the center and kind of like just go around. It's so pretty to have like watercolor bleed like that. And then we just clean our brush, grab some yellow from here. I mix it with a bit of the orange so it just like blends slightly nicer. And then we'll do the edges of the flower. can kind of like have it go like that so it blends better so there isn't this like white gap between the colors and it's okay if it's like not perfect um, once we add the pen marks it'll look totally different we'll be painting the lupins next we'll start off with the green tips so you're just drawing a bit of green there and then we'll be doing the purple part after. So it's just dabbing in purple petals. So just kind of follow your pencil marks and draw in the purple or paint in the purple petals and then paint your leaves in green to fill out the rest of it. All right, we're gonna let this dry and then we'll go over it with our black pen. So we're using our black pen and drawing over the pencil lines that we drew before. As I mentioned before, don't worry if your watercolor paint job kind of looks kind of blobby or it doesn't look amazing. Adding the black outline to the drawing will hide a multitude of sins. You'll see how forgiving the black pen is and it'll completely transform your painting. So we're simply following the pencil lines that we drew before. I wanted the middle of the poppy to have more of a focal point, so I added additional pen strokes to the middle of the poppy flowers. So for this DIY painting, we're also inspired by Society Six's paintings as well. Uh, where the first one was really feminine and floral, this one will be really geometric and structured. So it will be a huge contrast to the first painting we did. But you'll also need black pens again to create outlines. And then we'll use kind of monochrome colors to create our painting. Once you've found your middle, then we will use this Quaker Oats oat container and find the center of it. So you can see we're just putting it close to the edge and drawing a semicircle. So 
So that will be our large semicircle. Get a ruler to draw the top of the semicircle. Camera cap that we'll just use to draw a small circle. As you can see, I'm using whatever I have in my home to draw these circles. So use whatever you have at your disposal to help you with your painting. Here I'm drawing another semicircle and I'm going to be doing an arch. So a semicircle and then lines below. And then as you can see, I'm doing additional lines. So kind of following the, the edge of the circle that we drew before and just drawing smaller circles and then drawing the rest of the arch below. It'll be easier to see once I have the pen lines instead of the pencil. All right, I'm sorry my camera died and I didn't get to capture um, how I painted this. So it's basically, we used water, kind of same as the poppy concept uh, or like when we were painting the flowers, we wet the circle first and then we added the color. So for, um, for this one, we wet the circle first and then I mix this light blue and a bit of black and created this like light gray, um, bluish kind of color. And then for this one, same concept, got uh, water onto the semicircle first. And then for this one, I wanted it to be a different color to this one, but just like slightly. So I grabbed this blue, um, so it's a bit more saturated than this light blue. This blue and then a bit of black and then again created a like gray black mixture sorry gray blue mixture let's color the edges and then kind of like push the color into the center if that makes sense and then um, to add a bit more like blending and texture i kind of used slightly different colors in terms of like adding a bit more gray to my br uh, brush so it kind of adds like a bleeding effect let's color the edges and then kind of like push the color into the center if that makes sense and then um, to add a bit more like blending and texture i kind of used slightly different colors in terms of like adding a bit more gray to my br uh, brush so it kind of adds like a bleeding effect which i think just adds a bit more character to your painting so it's not just like one solid watercolor um, and i think that's the nice thing about watercolor it just blends color really well so then next we will be doing the black um, pen outline of this um, kind of semicircle situation. We've already sketched it out with our pencil and we'll just be going over it with our black pen. So we're just tracing over the pencil lines that we did before with our black pen. If there's some pencil lines that you want to erase, go ahead and do that now. Uh, make sure the black pen is dry so then you don't like rub the black pen and smudge it in any way. For this last DIY painting, we are inspired by anthropology this time. And these paintings look so beautiful, elegant, and really customizable to kind of the color palette you want in your space. It looks really organic and natural. And this time, all you'll need is watercolor painting. You won't need a black pen to create any outlines as well. All right, so for this one, I think we're gonna stick with some purples and some like rusty red colors. I really like this palette of like the first line I've created so far. I just wanted to do like one line first to kind of see if I was happy with it and then for us to continue to do it line by line down this page. So um, in terms of palette wise, I'm sticking with these four colors here. I'm happy with kind of the more um, reddish purple tones. So this is this is our magic spot right here. With our smaller brush, we're gonna get some water on it and then dab it. And then we're gonna get our 
bigger brush and kind of get our color onto it. I'm gonna switch it out, get some water. And get some purple onto here. So we're just repeating these steps for the entire row, just adding more water and then mixing a different color. So you want the colors to be varied. So between those four um, red and purple colors, just mix them up however you like so there's a variation there's no exact pattern to it and it keeps it interesting and surprising so mix it however you like and just repeat those steps all down that row and when that row is done do the next row and the next row until you're done your paintbrush will get pretty saturated with color so use the water and paper towel to clean off your brush from time to time guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys make these watercolor paintings yourself they're so easy and they'll just look so beautiful in your space I know it so please like comment subscribe and have a great day bye